you're telling me and 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 our and our viewers that you need to really understand all oh, all six of them. You really do, and the reason is I'm not trying to tell you, as I said, I'm not trying to tell you that everybody in a generation is alike. Yeah. But if you went, if your formative years were during the Great Depression, you probably tend to be thrifty. If your formative years were during the Vietnam and Nixon era, you probably tend to question authority. So it goes with every generation. Today we are divided. If you understood what motivates each of these generations, if you understood their strengths and their weaknesses, uh, you could, whatever you're interested in, if it involves people, the more generational knowledge you have, the smoother everything is going to flow. Yeah. What, what was the first time we used millennials as a term? Uh, I'm going to tell you the first time I noticed it. I noticed it during Columbine. All of a sudden, really? here comes Columbine, and I think to myself, these aren't my Gen Xers. If Gen Xers get mad at you, they spam you. They'll crash your website, but they would never do anything like Columbine. Gener the millennials want to make a grand statement with their lives, and it can be a grand statement for good, save the world, and if they're turned the wrong way, they want to make a grand statement for bad. Once I saw Columbine, I knew we were in the middle of a shift, and I started studying them then. When everybody else noticed, I really don't know, but I wanted to see what usually you have a historic event, a war, an economic event. So then you had uh, the Grand Recession, the Great Recession, and you had 9-11, all of which impacted their lives tremendously. And then I could come out and tell my clients, all right, we have a new generation forming. I called them Generation Y at the time. Meanwhile, I've switched over to calling them millennials because they were the first graduating class of the millennial. And I think I like to identify generations by a historic event. It makes it easier to remember. And now we we keep feeding this millennial generation. If, if it starts at 15, what's the next movement within the millennial generation as we have these young people move into that age group? I want to, I want to tell you what I think is really key for people understanding this generation. They have no concept of privacy. This is the tell-all generation. You see them with their phones. You see them texting. They really don't understand this concept of discretion and privacy. Most young people don't, but with this generation, it is the worst. So I would say from day one that you employ them, you begin to train them what is appropriate to talk about in the office, out of the office, in your house, out of your house. Uh, if you had understood that, if people had understood that, Edward Snowden would have never walked out of the NSA with all the secrets on a memory stick. Uh, there is no concept of discretion here. So if I'm an employer for a mom and pop business or for the Fo Ford Motor Company and I don't want my secrets out there or my private business out there, they will tell all. They, they live in a water cooler world where you tell everybody everything. So 10 years from now, mm -hmm. what's going to be the difference in the millennials? Absolutely nothing except the two things. The beauty of this type of marketing it's like there's a cake in New Orleans called a dobesh cake that's a, a layer of cake, a layer of pudding, a layer of icing that keeps repeating itself. Yeah. I'm the cake, and that the cake is what holds everything up. What changes are two things. Age. It matters if a millennial is 16 or 66. Your needs are different. That will temper it a little bit. The other thing is current events. Are we in the middle of a war or are we at peace? Are we in the middle of the golden age of the stock market? Are we in the uh, Great Recession? It, current events will temper these characteristics, but everything I told you today is not going to change for this generation. The only thing that happens is when you get to the cutoff period, like a year, history doesn't turn on a dime. So when you, if you are targeting people who are right on the cusp between two generations, they can pick up a characteristics of one, or the other, or a few of both. And that's the only thing, really. Just remember this, generational characteristics, which are, it's almost like math. History forms generational characteristics, which form values, attitudes, and lifestyles. Doesn't change, you only add to it, am I selling to a New York audience or a California audience? Am I, are they 16 or 66? Uh, what kind of history are we living in at this particular moment? But this is the cake. 
that if you know it, you can always deal with these people, communicate with them, get them to work great, motivate them, get them out to vote, whatever it is, get them to give to your charity, whatever it is you want. If you understand what they grew up in, not what I grew up in, but what they grew up in, then it really gives you a, a, a really uh, a head start. It sounds like to me, America's in pretty good shape with the youth, huh? They need the guidance of older generations. Boomers aren't necessarily giving it to them. Remember, we go back to boomers being the me generation. I'm not talking about you, me, or anybody else personally, but they're staying in the workforce too long. And the reason they're staying in the workforce, boomers, yep. are staying in the workforce too long is they didn't save enough money for their retirement. It was all about what I wanted. Yep. So it blocks young people out of the workforce. You have people working in McDonald's-type jobs who really should be moving up the ladder, yeah. but they're blocked out by boomers who cannot, who didn't save enough and cannot get out of the workforce. Yeah. So you have two magnificent generations. But if you don't know what makes them magnificent, if you don't know what their weaknesses are, then you can't make full use of their potential. That is true with every generation. You listen to Ann Fishman, and her book is Marketing to the Millennial Woman. And uh, it's a must read, and it's also, it, it's new stuff for me. I don't well, think I've ever had this discussion with anybody about millennials or about generationals. Well, and thanks, and so this is this is great information for you. The more information we have, the smarter we get. And all of it makes sense. And Anne has done this research. Go buy her book, Marketing to the Millennial Woman. You'll get so much more out of it than just, just that. And uh, uh, keep looking at this video and, and share it with your, your, your friends because you won't hear this type of discussion. Uh, I've never heard this type of discussion, quite frankly. So it's been educational to me. And Anne, we thank you so much for joining us. And we'll look forward to having you back again. Thank you so much, Fran. I really appreciate being on. Thank you.